conference will now be recorded. Hello, everybody. I'm going to open the meeting with a roll call vote, please. Um, we'll start with John. John Ketcher, I. Mary. Mary Maslowski, yeah. Robert. Robert Doan, I. Joe. Tony Perlin, I. Kathy. Catherine Green, I. And David Nixon, I. Okay, thank you. Jim, would you open the governor's? <clears throat> Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law GLC 30A section 18 and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Town of Harwich Community Preservation Committee on Thursday, June 10th, 2021 at 6 p.m. will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information on the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend the meeting can be found on the Town of Harwich website, www.harwich-ma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so in the following manner, on channel 18 or by the simulcast at the URL posted on this agenda. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Town of Harwich's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And Thank you, Jen. Okay, I'm going to open it up to the public. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, welcome Don, welcome Mike. Okay, first um, minutes. Can we have a, can we have a vote to, for the minutes for 4-22-21? Dave? Yes, sir, a motion. Go ahead, Don. Before you do that. Yeah, before you do that, the section that, uh, page seven that has to do with uh, my presentation as the housing trust chair, uh, it's not that we don't do that anymore. We can't do that without uh, town meeting approval. That would have to do with the line of credit. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay, so again, the minutes for 42221. Is there a motion? Can't. I'll move to approve the minutes. For April twenty second, twenty twenty one. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Okay. Roll call. Just as a clarification, is that as amended or is that just approve them as written? We can amend it. Did you get that, Jan? Okay, so we'll start with a roll call vote. John Ketchum? Aye. Mary Maslowski? Mary Maslowski, aye. Robert Doan? Aye. Kathy Green? Kathy Green, aye. Elaine Shovlin? If she's there, I don't know if she's muted. She doesn't get to vote. I don't get oh, to vote. Oh, sorry. I, I, <laughs> I'm thinking of someone else. All right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, she can, but she doesn't count. Go ahead, you Donna. must go. Um, Donna? Donna Kalanick, I. And myself, I. Okay, minutes for 5721. Is there a motion?
I'll move to approve the minutes for May 7th, 2021. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, roll, roll call vote again. Is the second, Donna? Donna Kalanick, aye, and I want to thank Jan. She did an excellent job on those minutes. Joe? We'll talk later. It's not good. Joe and Parliament, aye. Kathy? Kathy Green, aye. Robert? Robert, don't aye. Mary? Mary Maslowski, aye. John? John Ketchum, aye. And David Nixon, aye. Okay, now on the new business, um, approval of a one year extension for 2018 Article 53 Habitat for Humanity, Habitat for Humanity. Um, and the amount of the project was $300,000. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. We'll start with Robin. Uh, no comments. Kathy. Uh, I don't have any comments. I was actually at the Habitat site on Monday and um, they're moving along. They hope to have the wall raising started in July. So I think that it was just a matter of the COVID thing really slowed them down, but I think they're on track right now. So. Thank you, Kathy. Joe. I am done. I'm good, thank you. Donna. No comments, I support this request. Mary. I'm supportive of the request. I think between COVID and, and the length of time it took them to get some of the the telephone pole moved, um, you know, I have no problem with a one year extension. John. No comments. And I'm a yay, so it's done. Okay, next on the agenda. David, you didn't vote. Oh, I thought we just did. You only took comments. Oh, all right. Let's start again. We'll start with the chair. I'm a yay on this. John Ketchum. John Ketchum. Aye. Mary. Mary Maslowski, aye. Robert. Robert Doan, aye. Kathy. Kathy Green, aye. Joe. Joe McFarland, aye. Donna? Donna Kalanick, aye. All right, thank you. Thank you for that correction. All right, next. Public meeting hearing dates. Um, we have to do this at some point. I don't know how the board feels about not taking the month of June or July. Um, but we have other things we may discuss later. And um, I'm gonna put it out to the board. What's your pleasure? We'll start with Kathy. Um, since I wasn't on the board last year, I'm not really sure what you did. I know it must have been virtual, but um, typically we, we try to decide if we're gonna have it in the summer to include summer residents or not. So I don't know what was your thinking last year. Okay, Mary. Thanks, David. So to Kathy's um, comment, I think we had tried to do it in, I thought we did it in June last year, but I think we did it so that we could um, maximize the time we had um, out there to the public. And then it was close to town meeting and we had done the outreach with town meeting and then um, in the year before. So I, I seem to recall us deciding that we wanted to do it earlier in the year rather than waiting until September, but. Okay, thank you, Mary. John. Yeah, I, I, I agree, I, the earlier the better, I think. I, I would prefer to see it um, in July or August. Clearly, it's not going to happen in June. It's probably too late for that. But all right, all set, John. Robert. 
Yeah, I, I'm fine with um, July or August. Um, I think that would work out just fine. Okay, Donna. Yeah, I agree, July or August, and there should be some sort of uh, robust uh, strategy for community outreach um, around the public hearing. Thank you, Donna. Elizabeth. Hi, sorry, traffic was a bear. Um, I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'm happy to meet July, June, July, August. But I don't care. So, <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, I, I'm all I'm fine with July, August time frame. That's fine. Okay, so Joe, you are staying put. As far as I know, I'm good through the next two months. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, let's do it in July. Um, Jan, we have a, what are we looking at for dates? When is our regular meeting? The third? Um, second. The second uh, Thursday of the month would be the 8th of July. The only thing is, I will throw this out there that um, You'll see on the agenda, we're talking about other things later in the meeting. And one of the things is maybe we want to do a um, more planning for land purchases. And we want to do that sooner rather than later. And so that might be July's meeting. That, just throwing that out there. Okay, no, that's fair enough. Or if you want two meetings in a month or whatever. Kathy. Yeah, but typically don't we have the public part of the meeting first and then we go into regular session? That's what we've done generally. So we yeah. don't have to have two meetings. Yeah. No. That's a bad idea. <laughs> okay. Um, so we can have it at our regular time. Is everybody good with that? Mary? Oh, Mary's just blocking the screen. John? Yeah, I think we should have it at the regular time, six o'clock on July 8th. Sounds good to me. Okay. Joe? I, I'm fine with that. That's good. Okay. Mary? I'm fine with that, David. Okay, thank you. Bob? Uh, the only uh, comment I have is, is that is the week of the biggest week of the year for people being here. And I'm just wondering if townspeople will be more worried about taking care of business that week than, uh, you know, being able to stop and take time for this. Any response to that? So maybe the following Thursday would be the 15th of July? I would think that would be better. Okay, John, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, that's a fair point. I mean, I don't, it's, let's see, what day is the fourth on? Is that Monday of that week? No. Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Monday. Sunday and Friday, Monday is the observed holiday mm -hmm. yeah so yeah probably you're right the 15th would be better either one's fine with me actually Kathy yeah I think if we can get a quorum we should probably go for the 15th okay thank you Joe you're good yeah no I agree I like I like Bob's comment I didn't think about the date so I'm good with the 15th Elizabeth? 15th is actually better for me, so I'm all in favor of that. Okay. Mary? 15th times. Okay. Donna? Uh, yeah, I think pushing a week away from the holiday is good. And I guess at that point, do we know, or is the town still going to be in the virtual format in a hybrid? What Does anybody know that? 
Well, so town, David, town, town office opens up the meetup, I believe. So I would assume all the meetings come back live. Um, maybe I can impose on Mr. Howell. You're muted, Don. There you go. That's the way most people like it. Uh, you mean to open up the door for you? Sure. Yeah. So we, are the board of selectmen going to happen? Well, you have live meetings now. So are, are the boards going to be opened up to be able to get in the, the room? The building is, uh, every meeting after our next meeting on Monday is going to be available for, uh, uh, probably just starting with the Griffin Room, which is okay for you guys anyway. It, it appears that I'm going to be, uh, he's talking to the chair today, that we're going to be your liaison again next year, so I'll be there. So I'll open the door for you. And just put down that you're taking the room uh, in the Selectman Administrator's office. Okay, thank you, John. Jan, did you get that? All right, so we have a date. So it's going to be the 15th. Everybody good? Seeing no objections, we'll move on. Um, all right, so we're going to the, rescind the open balances from CPC projects. Um, we're gonna start with Article 40, Depot Street Crossing Lights, the Bikeways Committee. It's uh, $13,008.33. Is there a motion? I move that we uh, rescind those funds from 2019 article number 40. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call vote. We'll start with Donna. Donna Callan, aye. Robert Doan, aye. Joe? Joe McFarland, all right. John? John Ketchum, hi. Elizabeth? Elizabeth Harder, aye. Kathy? Kathy Green, aye. And David Nixon, aye. Okay. I'm sorry. Mary? Aye. You're right, I did forget you. Mary, what's your vote? I vote affirmative. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Apologies. All set, Jan? All righty. Um, the next one is Article 30 from the 2016 Arboro House ramp. Um, and I want to thank Mr. Doan for following through on that. Um, the balance left over is $634.73. Is there a motion to rescind? I, yeah, I'm, I'll, move, Bob. I'll move to rescind uh, the balance from um, Article 30 at the 200, uh, 2016 uh, meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there's a vote and a second. That's six hundred and thirty-four dollars and seventy-three cents. Okay, roll call vote. We'll start with Mary. Mary Maslowski, aye. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Harder, aye. Kathy. Catherine Green, aye. Joe. Joe McFarland, aye. Donna. Donna Kalanick, aye. Robert. Robert Doan, aye. John. John Ketchum, aye. And David Nixon, aye. Okay, are we set? All set, Jan? Okay, the next one is Article 55, the Judith Eldridge property, 2018. The amount of money is $369. And before we go into a vote on this, um, I had a discussion with the chairman of the board of selectmen today and the chairman has requested more time to have a discussion within the board of selectmen and with the CPC. So um, 
I would like the board to take that into consideration before any, any action is taken. Um, I'm going to call, I don't know, can I call for a vote? I can't call for a vote. Um, can I have a, can we have a discussion over this particular kind of going? Yeah, this is actually a, a liaison thing because uh, Michael and I talked today and he, he could not be on the call, but he wanted me to uh, give a little bit more detail to you folks. Uh, whatever you think we were uh, doing with this property, and if we misspoke, we misspoke, but uh, it, it came out uh, of uh, a list of tax titles that we had, but we did not recommend it. we buy it to liquidate a tax title. We really recommended it because it was a special piece of property and Elaine happens to be on the call or did. Uh, and we had that discussion. We actually jumped priorities on uh, real estate and open space because we were concerned that this would actually get built upon. And anybody who's been going up Hall's path or past Hall's path uh, understands exactly what I'm saying. These uh, owners on known properties are getting aggregated in that was in a very sensitive area in Hawk's Nest. It was done when Chris Clark was around, and I can't say anything more than there was just volumes of things that uh, had loose ends that were not uh, put together. And we couldn't ask Joe with two town meetings within six months of each other to drop everything to work on this. KP Law, as the Real Estate and Open Space Committee can also uh, verify, has been horribly non-responsive in getting uh, back to us because this is something that's going to involve them also we we just need the time we don't want to have a fight with you we don't want to have to duke it out on town meeting floor we just want some more time so we can get back to you about a, a mutually acceptable solution to this because we really still need the property and we need the money associated with the property thank you don and i will say this to the board i've had some very strong opinion about this particular project um but there have I'm looking at it a little bit differently now. Um, there's been some good argument, and I want it, I would like if if the board would go with this. I would like to give the board of selectmen more time to iron this out, and then maybe either we have a joint discussion with the board of selectmen, a joint meeting to go over it, the, the pros and cons of it. Um, I just like to give them the opportunity to have a little bit more time. Um, and I'm going to open that up to the board for discussion without voting. And it's up to the board what happens from here forward. So, John Ketchum. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I fully support trying to perpetuate a deal here to acquire that property. I, however, really don't like that we're being sprung on this at the last minute with no prior communication and being asked to make a decision. I, because I, I don't understand the situation. All of a sudden we're being told something different than we understood before. Right. Um, and I have not had time to explore the details. I. I would really like to have something in writing that I can read. I want to support what the selectmen are doing. I want to support them getting things straight. But I don't like this sprung on me. I mean, not even before the meeting, not even an hour before the meeting, at the meeting. So that's my comment. Robert. Yeah, you know, and, I, and I, I'm in all support of um, preserving this land or, or securing it. I'm just concerned over the, the methodology of how it's going to happen. And I just want to make sure the CPC is doing the right thing in uh, spending our money correctly. Um, the heart's in it, but we just got to do it right so we can't be critiqued or challenged later, either legally or, or whatever, uh, about how we spend our money. That's it. Thank you, Bob. Kathy. Well, since I'm the only one that voted against spending the money last last week, you know how I stand. But um, I do think we need in writing 
um, the exact sort of process and procedure that's going to be followed, um, you know, for the town to actually take ownership of this property, the timeline, um, and where the funds are going to go. Thank you, Kathy. Joe. Well, I, I'm with John on this. I, I, I'm a little lost as to what this, what it's 2018. And I'm wondering if um, Don or somebody could just give me a little Reader's Digest uh, explanation as to why this is here in, in front of us, um, you know, two and a half years later. That, that's all. I'm sure there's a reason. I just don't, I wasn't. I wasn't on this committee back then, so. Right, guys. Well, go ahead, John, you've got the floor. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the Reader's Digest version, Joe. Uh, it, it, it was in a portfolio of properties that the, that the then selectman and the board was actually, is actually turned over uh, several members at that time. And we have a different town administrator, but the portfolio came dangerously close to being sold. Uh, basically, uh, somebody is a shark who buys portfolios and gives people an opportunity to buy their taxes out. And if they don't have them, they bundle them and flip them. Uh, and this one was in that, but it's an owner's unknown property. So there's, it's a non-performing tax property, but it's also owner's unknown the problem is that Chris never pursued any of this stuff uh, with KP Law. Uh, what we're really trying to do, uh, even if we did it as a, uh, as a uh, taking of unknown property through eminent domain, for instance, we'd still need uh, to have money available to us just in case it winds up having a, an owner pop up who asserts either a percentage ownership or full ownership. Uh, and we don't have that. So if you pull the if you pull the money, basically we're out of the game. And that in this property, uh, I've heard this a million times from people, and I'm sure you guys have all heard this. Whether it's building affordable housing or it's trying to preserve open space, when people tell me, "Well, you can't build on it anyway," that is a bogus argument because it's a point in time argument. Uh, this Belmont Gardens is all uh, developed, uh, having been an undevelopable property. Uh, you just need a willing ZBA to help you out. Uh, we, we consider this clearly part of the overall Hawks Nest uh, preservation. And at one point, this was even considered by the town, which I think was a misbegotten thought, for a water uh, discharge from uh, sewage, uh, which basically aghast me and a number of other people. So this was a way of getting it out from under and creating it as overt open space. And how that gets from here to where it needs to get, we need to be able, if KP Law can't do it, I'm all, and I'm sure Michael is too, we're all in on just getting a special counsel to finish this if, if we can't get them to. Michael's very committed to doing it. I'm very committed to doing it. Joe has only been a uh, permanent town administrator for less than a year. So we, that's why we need the time, Joe. I mean, it's, it's, it's convoluted. Uh, I know it seemed like we were saying that we could use this money to liquidate the tax uh, lien against it, but that's not really what it was ever about. We're trying to preserve the property so it doesn't go back on the market somewhere. Okay. And then my my last question on this then is, do we do we are we able to table this today, or to your point, Dave, do we have to vote on this or not? What's what's the What's the deal on that, on this article? We have the ability to table this, but um, I want to hear what the board has to say first okay. before any motions to me. All right. Thank you. Sure. Um, Elizabeth. Okay. So I'm finally calming down from my drive. Uh, this is the Eldridge property. Yes. And I, what I'm confused about is we're back to 369,000 when right before town meeting, we were told two something, thou, 200 something thousand. I'm, I'm confused. Property, property. Go ahead, oh. go ahead, Kathy, explain, go ahead. 
Please yeah. explain. I'm sorry. The property. the property at town meeting was the Jenkins property. Oh, Jenkins. Right. This is Judah Eldridge, which was voted on in 2018. Oh, that cute, that one that has 300 heirs. Okay, now, I, now I've got it. All right. Yeah, I, I know this property. Um, I, I have, I have no idea what to do about it. It's, it sounds like a complete cluster. Putting it mildly, Mary. Thanks, David. I think all their, all the selectmen are really asking us to do right now is just hold off on our vote. So if the goal is to have a meeting with the selectmen, um, for, to give them a little bit of time to figure out what's going to happen. Um, I, I don't see a problem with that. We can reschedule. If we don't like what we hear, we can reschedule a vote to rescind any time. So I, I don't see a problem in, in granting this request at this, you know, at this meeting. Thank you, Mary. And uh, what I want to let the board know, um, again, I felt very strongly about my what I said in executive session, but I also understand that this particular parcel, if this can be worked out with the Board of Selectmen, this particular parcel for the town would go a long way into what people, what the town taxpayers are actually asking the CPC to do. So um, I'm willing to listen I'm willing to grant them the time to to make the arguments. Donna. I'm sorry, you didn't call on me. I, I didn't know if you were going and then you were gonna call on me, but um, I think the important thing is that um, we have something with a timeline on it. So, I mean, my preference would be that this not have an indefinite postponement to it um, and also a commitment, you know, to the board communicating with the CPC. I mean, I think part of the problem was that potentially the misunderstanding in 2018 was also around how the town meeting article was written. So it may require a correction of that town meeting article. Um, in terms of if we resend the money now, that doesn't preclude the town of Harwich from moving forward and doing either A, eminent domain, or B, a tax taking with legal funds that they have available to start that process and then to come back to the CPC with another application when they have a better handle on what the cost is going to be because both of those processes take a long time and in the meantime you are tying up CPC funding. That being said, I'll go along with uh, what it seems like the committee is saying, which is to allow the Board of Selectmen time to work through how they want to proceed with this but i i don't think it should be an indefinite amount of time i think we need to come to an agreement about how much time that is thank you thank you donna my apologies um again to the board for tonight's meeting, um, if we can table this discussion, I'll have a discussion with the chairman of the board of selectmen, and I will. I can send out a blast to you folks to keep you informed. Please don't answer the blast as to what kind of a timeline we're looking at, what kind of action is going to be taken, and what kind of time we can get to sit down with the board of selectmen. Is that okay with the members? John. Can I suggest that we take an, an explicit vote now to postpone consideration of rescinding those funds until some date certain? Is like, that a motion? Uh, okay, I'm making a motion. Yes, we, a second. Well, I didn't finish the motion. Okay, I'm sorry, John, go ahead. <laughs> that we postpone 
consideration of rescinding the funds for the Eldridge property until our August meeting. Second. So there's a, it's on the floor for discussion. We'll start with Kathy. I have no comment. Elizabeth. August, sounds good. Mary. Yes, you on the, uh, yes. Donna. Um, I, I vote, are we voting or are we just taking comment? We're, we're at discussion. I, 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 I second it, so I'm in favor of that motion. Okay. Joe. Also in favor. Robert. I'm in favor of the motion also. Okay, that ends the discussion. Anybody else from the board? All right, all those in favor, roll call vote. Kathy. Kathy Green, aye. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Harder, aye. Mary. <laughs> Mary Mathlowski, aye. Uh, David, just a point, I'm gonna have to jump off. All right, Mary, thank you. Joe. Joe McFarland, aye. Donna. Donna Kalanick, aye. Robert. Robert Doan, aye. John. John Ketchum, aye. And David Nixon, aye. Okay, folks. Um, I lost I lost my computer. I lost my agenda. Jan, what's next? Uh, discussion on creating a written policy for land purchase procedures. Okay, so we'll open it up to the floor. Um, Donna, would you like to lead with us? Sure, I'd be happy to, David. Thank you. Um, and Mary, if you leave, hopefully you'll go back and watch the rest of this meeting because I think, you know, your input is really important to this uh, particular subject. Um, so obviously, over the last couple of months, we've struggled with some of the land acquisition applications that have come into the CPC um, for a number of reasons. And I think we probably all agree that we could have a better process in place. Um, and I think this is really just to start the discussion I actually believe that um, the Board of Selectmen, you know, has a real role in this discussion. Um, I don't know if they themselves have a policy that guides how land is acquired um, in the town of Harwich. Um, okay, so I think F I see Kathy saying yes, and I see Don saying yes. So I think that's a document that um, that the CPC probably needs to look at and in, and either incorporate some of those principles into the application um, or consider how that's done. Um, I actually went back through our application and the last land acquisition application that came in to us. And, you know, the section about open space um, is fairly thorough, but what I think is missing, and this is my opinion, is I think that there should be approval, some sort of approval or authorization from the Board of Selectmen. Um, and I think that there should be something, and I looked at a couple of other uh, applications from other towns that either demonstrate that um, the applicant has control of the land purchase, so that's either a purchase and sale, or I saw one application, which I think was from Concord, where they said the seller had to uh, write a letter agreeing to allow the applicant to apply for the CPC funds. Um, 
I had sent to David and Jan yesterday um, some of the documents that the town of East Ham uses, um, particularly in the checklist section of their real estate. Um, there's some useful information that there, again, maybe it's something everybody looks at and um, has ideas to come back for the next meeting about you know, what the, what this should look like. Um, I recognize that acquiring land, because I, I do this as part of my job, acquiring land on behalf of a municipality, whether it's through a purchase and sale, eminent domain, tax taking, if you're doing it with multiple partners, however you do it, it's very challenging. Um, and it's time consuming, like I, w we do understand that, but as a CBC committee, you know, we also have a responsibility to make sure that all the docs are in a row when we approve applications and move them to town meeting. Um, I'd love to hear, I think, from Kathy about the written, because she had her hand up about the written policy that the town actually has. May I speak? Through the chair. <laughs> Through the chair, you're on, you're muted. Can I yeah, speak? Yeah, we do. You've got okay. it. All right. So yes, there has been a um, Town of Harwich Board of Selectmen land acquisition policy uh, that has been in effect since July 18th, 2011. And this is a policy, we have a checklist that real estate and open space uses um, uh, before we bring a parcel to the Board of Selectmen for uh, approval to continue the process. So the beginning of it is sort of more like a purpose, the ownership and tax status, whether there's regulatory issues, et cetera, what sort of funding sources there might be. We do go to the, real, uh, to the Board of Selectmen. We may or may not get approval at that point, because as you know, with the Hinkley's Pond watershed project, which was the Jenkins land, they did go to the Board of Selectmen and they, you know, went through the process of some approval, some changes, some approval, et cetera. So they, the, the Board of Selectmen are, are, are there at the very, you know, at the very beginning. Um, and then typically uh, a negotiate, this is how it was done before, a negotiating team was put together by the Board of Selectmen that included sometimes you know, HCT, town administrator, maybe a person, a real estate person or something like that, that would do negotiating with the um, potential seller. So we do have parts of a policy in place. Okay, so my question is, it was, what was the date on that? Was it 11? 2011 it was adopted I believe okay I have never seen that document in the years I've been on the CPC that I can recall well I mean it's a land acquisition policy that was put out by the Board of Selectmen I mean it doesn't necessarily mean that the CPC would have to take a look at that if the questions were all if the checklist is taken care of and uh, according to what our, what we have on our application requests, uh, those requests, those questions should be answered when the application comes to us at CPC. Okay, but if we have, if the CPC doesn't have a guideline to go by. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the CPC would it assume, doesn't, I understand, I understand what you're saying. The CPC would assume that the pol the board act was the board of selectmen land acquisition policy was adhered to and followed. I think that's what the assumption would be when it comes to CPC. Okay, I won't debate that issue. Don. Okay. I, I think he said Don, not Donna. Yeah, Don. I'm sorry. I was Don. referring to Don about. That. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, there's a little bit there's a little bit that's happened since then uh, we recognized uh, it wasn't our proudest moment uh, last town meeting and uh things have kind of gotten away from us uh, the uh, uh catherine is absolutely right uh that we had a policy i mean it preceded me uh and 
Uh, we're trying to get back to the, the, the essentials of this. Uh, the you know, Real Estate Home Space Committee is advisory to the Board of Selectmen. It doesn't represent the, the town government in, uh, in and of itself. Um, at this point, we have agreed uh, to, uh, to be able to examine the whole process again, but we, to the extent that we are named as the town as an applicant, on top of what uh, Kathy was saying, uh, we are requiring anybody who wants to do anything, even if they've approached real estate and open space, that they have to actually start with the town administrator so that there's a flag that's raised uh, so that the Board of Selectmen has it on its radar screen that uh, we're being asked as a town uh, to sponsor something. Because as you know, even the day before town meeting, we didn't know exactly who was sponsoring that article. Uh, that, that was a major problem. And we learned by that mistake, we're not gonna do that again. All right, thank you, Don. Now, so, Don. Uh, an act to uh, purchase land, even if it's within <laughs> Am I frozen or are you frozen? Uh, no, you're, you're frozen. frozen. <laughs> but again, the portal is going to be the town administrator. We vested that uh, authority in him two weeks ago. Uh, that it, it, no matter what the uh, purchase is, if we're, if we're going to sponsor it, you know, the article we, uh, as a town, we're going to ask the, the town administrator to be involved so that we can follow this through both real estate and open space and the board of selectmen so that we know exactly who's sitting what and how the article's being written, because that got away from us too. The article got written apparently absent the intent of both you and the Board of Selectmen. I'm not even sure that it was the intent of the uh, folks from the Harwich Conservation Trust the way it got written. So uh, we can promise you that's not going to happen again. All right. Thank you, Don. Donna. So I mean, the, the, you know, the few land acquisition applications that I've been involved in since I've been on, plus this one we're talking about from 2018, they, they don't feel like they've been very straightforward. And so that means that there's something broken in the process. Um, if you have a land acquisition policy for the town of Harwich, that's 10 years old or probably needs to be updated. Um, and I, I do think it's something that the CPC should be aware of because in most of these land acquisitions, we are being asked to be the funder. So us as a committee understanding what process is in place prior to it coming to us is really important. And we're not going to belabor what happened this past town meeting. I actually appreciated the fact that both Don and I believe it was Larry, um, you know, stood up and talked about it and didn't, you know, throw the CPC under the bus. I, I personally appreciated that. However, um, it's, you know, it's not a great thing to hear that the article wasn't written the way that the CPC voted and what the select board wanted, that, that's a real problem. Um, and, you know, what we need to do is come up with solutions and processes and communicative paths that fix those problems. And that that's all this discussion is about. Thank you, Donna. Okay, Joe. Questions, comments? No, I, I I heard all that Donna said. I'm fine with what what, you, what was just discussed. I'm good. Thanks, Joe. Elizabeth. I think everything Donna said makes perfect sense. Um, you know, I'm I'm new to this committee, and and when. Um, when that uh, Jenkins project came up and everything happened, I thought, boy, I really don't know what, how this committee works. And then I realized, no, everybody else was equally confused. Um, so I think Donna is spot on that we need set policies, set steps to follow. Um, and, and that would be very helpful. Okay, um, let's go to Robert. 
Yeah, and and I want to go back to one of Donna's original comments that we should have these um, applications screened by an attorney uh, counsel before we really get into them because you know that's where I see we've been tripping, getting tripped up is is not being assured that our actions are legal or, or proper. And um, you know, like like on the previous Eldridge property, clearly that that is an issue there of confusion and you know and and frankly we have like both uh, donna and mary on who really do understand land acquisition uh, i certainly don't but i certainly have learned a lot from uh, those two members on how it should go and the confusion between eminent domain and tax taking and all that it is very complex and definitely we need to have council look at these uh, before we really start to study or before we vote on them thank you John. Yes, well, I guess I, I focus on the last thing Donna said, which is um, it's all about having well-defined, well-understood processes and communications paths. And I, I, would, I would emphasize the well-understood part because you can have a well-defined process, but if nobody knows what it is, you... Have this, you haven't solved any problem. Good points. Um, for the board, I'm just perplexed that, again, for the time I've been on the CPC, um, I didn't know there was a policy for this, the board of selectmen. Um, and then the other issue is so going back to Robert's comments, the attorneys. Um, I want to be very careful what I say now. Um, I don't believe in an adversarial position between the town of Howitch and the CPC. I never have. But I have asked this board and other times with this board for um, outside, outside counsel. At one point, I did exactly that. And... It, it, the situation resolved itself, but now we're, we're right back in the same situation that we were before. Um, and I don't have an answer to that. I don't know if an outside counsel or maybe possibly a different counsel within the firm that the town uses. I don't have an answer for that question, but that's a good question to talk to the chairman of the board of selectmen with. <laughs> Don, go ahead. Yeah, you, you can be circumspect. I don't have to be. If I could fire Giorgio tomorrow, I would. Uh, <laughs> I know that I've got one other person who agrees with me. Uh, Michael's going to have a conference call with uh, Lauren Goldberg, who is the uh, principal partner at uh, KP Law. Uh, the other me uh, on the trust actually had a unanimous vote of the uh, housing trust to get special counsel, which the uh, Board of Selectmen appointed for it. Uh, if everybody starts asking for special counsel, then the problem isn't that we need special counsel. The problem is that we're not satisfied with the counsel we have. Uh, so yeah, KP Law is kind of a strange animal. You get out of law school, normally people recruit you and they uh, tell you what your starting salary is going to be and they hire you for, for an associate's position or whatever. Um, KP Law, you buy your geographic uh, representation. So John Giorgio bought Harwich and he's got a team of his own that are his team. His real estate person is Sharin. I mean, he's got different people. We have been unhappy with the entire team that he has, never mind him. Uh, we asked for different counsel ourselves uh, on the liquor hearings. We asked for different counsel uh, lately on the Hall's Path uh, fiasco. Um, so I, I agree with you. There's a problem, and, and we understand there's a problem. If, there, if you are thinking that your interests are disparate from ours in a particular area, I don't see anything wrong with you asking uh, for special counsel to be appointed for you. But the real answer is everybody feels uncomfortable with the representation they got. I was mortified uh, how John was uh, playing out the uh, Article 33. And my takeaway from that wasn't the town meeting particularly. It was 
our lawyer should have been the one who was playing go goaltender uh, before this if there was a problem, and he should have alerted everybody that there was a problem, and he did not. He actually compounded the problem by trying to rewrite it into what he thought you wanted. Uh, so, and that messed everything up uh, because you had taken prior votes. So just being honest about it, the board of selectmen is probably one vote away from pulling representation from KP law entirely, but that as a threat means that their billings are gonna be completely gone from the town. And I think we can get better people. And if we can't, then there's a willingness to look around. Thank you, Don. Um, Kathy. Yeah, I mean, point, point in fact, we did have legal representation. Legal counsel was at the uh, meeting when we discussed the Judah Eldridge property. And, you know, we felt that we had gotten the legal opinion that we were, you know, seeking. Um, so, you know, we maybe it wasn't correct at the time, but, you know, we did get legal opinion. Um, I just wanted to ask Donna a question, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Um, Donna, you, I thought you implied that there were other land um, acquisition uh, projects this year that you felt um, was the reason we needed the policy. And what were those other um, projects? No, I, I was specifically talking about the, the one that we just took up at town meeting and then our ongoing discussion about the um, the the parcel from 2018 that that, that was okay. really what I was talking about okay. um, prior to that and we can't discuss it because it was an executive session a year prior to that we also had another parcel um, come before us where there wasn't a clear path and ultimately it got pulled um, but Again, it was sort of the sense of the CPC didn't know how, where to go with it because we were asked, we were being asked to do things that we were not comfortable doing. And this was before you were, this was last year, it was the year you were off, Kathy. And honestly, mm -hmm. like, I, you know, I know you have a fairly uh, good amount of expertise in the open space area, and I've always um, admired, you know, your role on that committee. And I mean, it's sounding to me like, you know, maybe there needs to be a small work group that involves an open space member, a CPC member, and a member of the Board of Slackman to work through how best to um, do these types of open space purchases. Um, I think there's just a little too much siloing going on where the communication breaks down and then we're put in a position that we don't want to be put in. And I do believe, and I have been saying this for a long time, I highly believe that the CPC applications need to be vetted through legal counsel before they're heard by CPC to find out, you know, whether or not they're CPC eligible and what, you know, what extra measures may need to be taken in order to ensure these applications are thorough. And that is different than what the town meeting warrant article looks like. Uh, th those are two different steps in this process. And, you know, personally, I struggle with the fact that, you know, we didn't see that change in that town meeting article until it was way too late in the game. And that's a CPC article. I get it. We don't own the war warrant, but it's still an article that has community preservation committee on it. Elizabeth. To what Donna said, um, I mean, it seems to me, regardless of everybody's fondness for KP law, that we should be able to, and I, and I thought we put money aside for this, to be able to check with a lawyer from the 
whatever mass CPA, whatever that group is called, to make sure that what we're doing is is legal under the CPA law. Yeah, yeah, we have the ability to do that, Elizabeth. The money is there in the account, but it's going to be very specific questions to a specific article. And we don't know what those articles are until October 1st. Then we could develop a, I'm trying to put something together now to develop some kind of policy or a work group where we can take a look at where we are without any more recrimination on who made the mistakes, just go forward. And that would be have a discussion with, that's a great recommendation of a member of the board of selectmen, um, a working group that one of the board or two of the board or three of the board would volunteer for. So that's where I'm trying, I'm thinking about now, right. trying to get to that place. And then we can run it through the CPA. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, well, I think, you know, maybe it's time to look at changing the date that the application is um, due. You know, move it forward, you know, September 1, August 15th. I mean, typically, most of the applicants, usually 90% of the applicants are, are return applicants. They know the process, they know the application, they tweak it every year. Um, yes, and different town administrators, different groups to get approval from, but they basically know the process. I mean, and that would be one way to get us more time to have the applications looked at if they need to be looked at. Just for the sake of argument, Kathy, most of the applications are from Latana Howitch. John. No further comments. Robert. I had no further comments. Okay, Joe. Oh, just just so we don't forget both yours and Donna's comments on, you know, creating this committee. I, I, I hate to do this, but throw it back on you, David, as to what's the next step to to make that roll down the hill here. You know what I mean, and, and actually create this this group. Well, hold on. Let me hear from the rest of the board, Donna. Yeah, I guess the only thing I failed to say in in proposing a working group is obviously either the town administrator or the assistant town administrator um, should be involved um, in this working group because, you know, they are involved with all of these other groups and certainly with the legal counsel. Um, and um, but, I mean, that's all I'll say on this subject. I have something else, but I think it could go to a different place. So thank you, David. Thank you, Donna. Um, Kathy, any? Elizabeth? Well, do we have any work? Do we have any volunteers for a working group? Before, before you do that, David, can I bring this back to the Board of Selectmen because that's what a liaison is supposed to do? And just tell them that that's what you have in mind and see how we can form this thing with you? That's fine, but I got to put them on the hook right now to get some volunteers. <laughs> Kathy? I have no comment. <laughs> would, would you be willing to help out? If need be. <laughs> You're on the hook, Kathy. Um, John? Uh, I'd be willing to help out. I'm not sure I'm the right person, uh, just because I don't have expertise in this area. But if somebody thinks that uh, I would be able to add something, I'd be willing to get involved. I, I suspect Kathy and Donna are, and Mary, Mary are more qualified than I am. Yeah. Well, and and I'm 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 going to volunteer Mary because she's not on the call. She can't defend herself any longer here, um, Robert. It, it, and again, it doesn't matter how big 
the group is, as long as we can take action. So, Robin? Yeah, I, I would defer exp uh, to, to other people that clearly would have more expertise in, in putting together a, a workable organization or, or a strategy. Okay, thank you, Robin. Joe? Yeah, I, I like the two volunteers you already identified, David. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth? I mean, I, I'm happy to help that group in any way they need, but I really do not have the expertise that Don, and Mary, and Kathy have. So I, I do think, you know, I'll, I'll help with anything they ask me to, but I, I don't think I'd be a, as valuable as they would. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, Donna. Well, so I'm going to say two things. One is I think it's important that the chair of the CPC be involved in this. Um, so that's the first thing I'm going to say. Uh, secondly, Mary is not here, but I do think, you know, particularly because she's been on the CPC for so long, she's been involved in a lot of these projects that she would be an excellent candidate and I do think you should have somebody who represents open space. Um, and, you know, Kathy's being reluctant, but I know she'll actually do it. So um, uh, I do want to say, David, you can't have, and Mary would say this if she were here, you can't have as many people as you want because you don't want to have a court. You don't want to have a quorum of the CPC. This is meant to be a working group, which means you're not posting. It's not, you know, you're not going through that whole rigam rigmarole that you would need to if you had a quorum of the members of the CPC. Um, so, and, and I would encourage the other CPC members, go on to the CPC coalition website or go to some other towns, look at their CPC applications, look at their CPC website. You know, um, there's not always the need to reinvent the wheel when there's good models out there to start with. And, you know, a lot of times that's what I do. I do a lot of research on, you know, who's doing it well out there and, and, and you know, how can we take the bones of what they're doing and improve it and make it um, you know, work for the town of Harwich or the town of Brewster or whatever town um, we're talking about. So, thank you. Okay. Um, Donna, will you be willing to help out? David, um, I would be willing to help out in an advisory capacity. Okay. All right. Um, Donna, is there anything you want to say tonight? Um, well, the only, are we going to, do we have other agenda items, David? Um, not after this. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I asked Jan to remind me, so go ahead, Jan. We do have one more item you want to read under other. Do you want me to tell you what it is? Go ahead. All right. It's request to the board for my key words to you. You want to request something. That's right. Um, I'd like to request a permission of the board to sign the documents of rescission that the board voted tonight. Um, those minutes are going to be drawn up, sent to Carol Coppola. Carol has drawn up the documents for what we need to do. Um, and uh, typically the chair signs those documents, it goes out to the applicants, the applicants sign, and then it comes back and it goes to the board of selectmen for their signature and approval. So this, do we all get that? Yeah. So do you want them? Do you want them to sign something that we're going to pass around in July? No, we're not going to pass it around. Okay. We're talking about the grant agreements, folks. Oh, okay. Maybe I, I wasn't clear. I'm talking about the grant agreement. You you used the word rescission, so that confused oh, us. Oh, did I? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
Flipper again. So I'm yeah, yeah, that's actually you know, to what Kathy just said. Um, we're, if it were a straight out rescission that you're instructing uh, Carol to do, our position on the Board of Selectmen no. is uh, it's an appropriation of town meeting and it can't be taken away without the town meeting agreeing with your proposal to rescind. What? Well, we're, I don't want to get into that right now. So um, let's just work on what we're working on. So, and we're talking about, what the hell are you talking about now? Grant agreements. Grant okay. agreements. Let me see. Grant agreements and you want a motion. I want a motion for the grant agreements. That's right. approved. All right. I make a motion to allow the chairman of the Community Preservation Committee this year, 2021, to sign the grant agreements on behalf of the Community Preservation Committee. Thank you. Okay, there's a motion on the floor and a second. Roll call vote. John? John Ketchum, aye. Robert? Robert Doan, aye. Kathy? Catherine Green, aye. Joe? Joe McFarland, aye. Donna? Aye. Uh, I'll vote aye, but I do believe that those signed grant agreements should come back to the board to see. And, and in a subsequent packet, in a subsequent um, uh, correspondence, um, the CPC members should see what, what was signed. Elizabeth? That's my opinion. Elizabeth Harder, aye. Okay, so we're all set I have on. A question. Go ahead, Tom. Um, I didn't see who seconded Kathy's motion. I did. Thanks, Joe. Okay. And John, about the and and to Mr. Howell, when we talk about rescinding money, um, in the, every one of the applications that comes through that we send. There is a provision in there when it hits the warrant that any monies that are unspent or unused come back to the CPC. It's already written into all the articles since the time I took chair. So they should. We'll they need should. to talk because the, the board, we'll need to talk because neither the, our lawyer nor the board agrees that. You can do that absent the acquiescence of the town meeting because you didn't you didn't put the money out there. You, you suggested the town meeting via an article that you would fund it, and they appropriated it, not not the board of selectmen and not you. Okay, so it, it's just a it's a matter of disagreement, not a problem. Right. So um, next on the agenda, Jen. That's we just need to. Um... If we're gonna have the public hearing in July on the 15th, are there any other agenda points that the committee wants besides the public hearing? Okay, does anybody want anything on the agenda for that meeting? Um, John? I don't have anything to suggest. Joe? I don't have anything additional, no. Okay. Kathy? Robert? No. Elizabeth? No, I'm good. Okay. Donna? Um, I think you would just want to have an agenda item where you bring back the status of how this working group is going to move forward because Slackman Howell is going to go back and talk to his board. So I think you, you know, if that's your next meeting, you're going to need to have that on there to, to talk about again. And then the other item, I think um, this CPC, to my knowledge, and, and I'd be happy to be corrected, has never done um, other than the annual public hearing, a long term CPC planning process. Um, I had sent through uh, the chair and Jan 
um, the five-year plan that the town of East Ham CPC developed. It's, it's actually in the CPC law that you are supposed to have some type of long-term planning um, done by CPC. Um, and I just think it's something at some point you might want to get on your radar and particularly because the town of Harwich um, should be in the process of doing a couple of other really important um, planning type uh, things. They need to update their local comprehensive plan and they need to update their housing production plan. Um, so I, I think that's something you want to consider for the long term. And if you look at the plan, take the time to read it because it's excellent and it included a lot of community input. Um, and we in the town of Brewster were actually uh, about to undertake this process. So, um, so that's those are future agenda items. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, raising my hand to speak in support of what Donna said. Uh, when you became chair, that was a conversation we had that the legislation called for the public hearing to primarily ascertain the needs and desires of the town so that you could develop a strategy uh, under which the applications themselves would fall and be, and be considered. Uh, there was the process was extremely opaque and i'd like to take the opportunity in front of the rest of the uh, committee members to say that uh david has been really diligent in trying to make this a more open process uh, it was horribly opaque before but the last step is what donna's suggesting you need to be able to ascertain uh what it is the the priorities of the town are and that's it comes from the town's people it comes from comprehensive plan that I hope is not written by a consultant. I hope it's written primarily from the bottom up uh, by stakeholders. And when that all comes into place, that informs you when you have this annual meeting so that the policies can be prioritized, you know, based on what you got as applications. Okay, thank you, John. Anybody else? I've got noise in the background, I'm sorry, folks. Um, there's nothing else. Do we have a vote to adjourn? So moved. Second? I'll second. Second, sorry. <laughs> Elizabeth seconds. Okay, roll call vote. John? John Ketchum, aye. Joe? Joe McCarlin. Kathy. Kathy Green, aye. Robert. Robert Doan, aye. Donna. Donna Kalanick, aye. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Harder, aye. And David Nixon, aye. Folks, I hope next meeting isn't as rough as this one's been. Okay, this conference is no longer being recorded. Night, everyone.